بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا ومولانا محمد وبارك وسلم أما بعد Am I blocking the... Okay. So uh, last time we were talking about the Makharij and we've categorized the Makharij into several groups. So these numbers are not like the, the 17 total. Um, they're, they're the groupings. Well, actually, there is a 17 total Makharij. So let's see. We've reached up to number 10, I see there. And that is Lam, Noon, and Ra. All right, we move on after this to the next set. And as we were talking, we were discussing how the scholars of Tajweed uh, mention the maharij and describe them. They start from the farthest part in the throat, and then they cover all the letters of the throat. Thereafter, they cover all the letters of the mouth, meaning uh, the letters that require the tongue and the teeth, etc., and you slowly come to the lips area, and there are certain letters of the lips, and then they finish with the farthest from the, the bottom of the throat, which is going to be the nasal cavity. So there are, that is a makhraj, the nasal cavity. So we left off covering all of this. As you can see, these uh, circled numbers are the different uh, makhraj. And we reached number 10. Number 10 is actually the teeth or, or the, uh, the ridges that one finds before the top teeth and the tongue interacting with that. So that, that was this diagram here. Continuing on from there, the next grouping is going to be uh, Ta, Dal, and Tha. These letters, we should write... Um, running out of space here i'll just start writing here ta fa and that the makhraj of this is going to be the tip of the tongue with the roots of the two top incisors so what are the two top incisors the front two teeth these front two teeth so behind the front two teeth the ridges which are here if you use your tongue and you touch the top of your mouth, the palate, and you, you touch the back of the front two teeth, and you go back a little bit more, you'll, you'll notice some ridges there, some wave-like patterns. And then when you go beyond that, you'll notice it's very smooth. So if you chase your tongue, you'll notice those ridges. That's right here. After that, it's going to be very smooth. So what he's saying here, the makhraj is going to be the tip of the tongue when it meets when it connects with those uh, the, the roots so in front of those ridges closer to the tip of the teeth uh, let me draw that here so if we have the inside like if you're looking upward at your mouth and these are your front two teeth and then you have like the ridges here, right? So th these are your front two teeth. You're looking upward at it. The ta, ta, dal is where the front part of your tongue is meeting here. Let me color that different so you can imagine it. Okay, that area. kind of looks odd. Let me draw the other teeth. Canine, premolars, and so on and so forth. Okay? Everyone understand that? Ta, ta, wa, da. It does, it touches the roots of the teeth. Right? So the roots of the teeth are included in this. So that, that is like this area here. So when you say ta, fa, dal, 
it does your the front of your tongue is touching the teeth but the roots of the teeth the top this part in the back ta ba dal a little bit is going to be going to be touching like the gum area but it's mainly the the roots of the teeth so that is going to be makhraj number 11 and we can draw a line from here the teeth are here it's going to be uh, there you go <clears throat> now the next one so again ta wa da some people overemphasize the ta and then they say like ta like an english uh, t what words can we think of in english like uh, to i'm going to to the store to when i say two in english or number two one two the tip of my tongue is not touching the roots of my teeth when i say two in english it's actually before that do you guys notice that like one two number two the arabic ta is going to be like two two so if an arab is trying to say his numbers he'll be like one two 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 three like that so English T is different than the Arabic ta. Ta, T, tu, at, t, t. That's all in that, uh, t the tip of the tongue on the roots of, of your teeth. So you need to practice that. And we need to be able to read the ta different than we read T's in English. So what other words in English? Um, top, top. It's on top of the bookshelf. Top, ta. So when you say top, ta, ta, notice that the tip of the tongue does not come into contact with the teeth. So that type, it shouldn't. You shouldn't be saying like a ta alamun, ta, ta. When you say ta alamun, it's not really touching the the roots of the teeth. Or if you say hatta, hatta, alam ta alam, ta. That is sounding like an English T. It should be touching the roots of the teeth, sounding like alam ta alam ta 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 alam ta alam. A little bit of both, not too much, sounding like a th, but also notice where your tongue is when you're saying the ta in Arabic. Kalla bal tu 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 hibun tu hibun al ajila. Instead of two, 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 you say tu hibun. Notice your tongue might not be touching the roots of the teeth, right? So ensure the tongue touches the roots of the teeth. It's not a such a sharp T like in English, nor is it a complete like uh, bland sound, if that's the right word for it, like da, da. Too much of the tongue. Uh, coming over the back of the two teeth will make it sound very flat. Like hatta, hatta, that's too much. Or if you say ta'alamun, ta ta'alamun, you're not using the tip of the tongue anymore. Ta'alamun. That sounds like a, like, uh, uh, thanks, thanks. In English, thanks. That's too much. So you want to do it less than that. Ta, ta, ta. So it's it's kind of in between. All right. So that requires practice. For the ta, that's where we see it a lot. Dal also. Da, it must be touching these roots. So in English, if you say uh, danger, danger, notice where your tongue is when you say, say the D. It's not coming into contact with the roots of the teeth. Danger, or uh, dare, or um, devil, devil. So notice where your tongue is. It doesn't touch the teeth. It's before the teeth. Same thing with the, the, the T in English. T and D in English, it's before the roots of the teeth. So for Arabic, you need to bring the tongue forward more. 
and then you'll have the Arabic dal and the Arabic ta. Okay, so there's a difference between Arabic and English. It's not exactly a D, it's not exactly a T. And ta, there's nothing like that in English. Uh, it does have to come, it's basically a ta, but with a lot of isti'la or a lot of uh, what's called tafkhim, full mouth sound to it. Ta, ta, da. So there's a flatness, but it's not too flat. Okay, so you, there's a precise sound to it. So that requires a lot of practice, a lot of listening, a lot of uh, critiquing yourself. What you can do, if you know what the sound is, you can record yourself and listen. Uh, the benefit of listening to yourself will only come when you realize what is right and what's wrong. So if you don't know what sounds right, what sounds wrong, there's no point in listening to yourself. But once you learn, like, okay, this is what it should sound like, when you listen to yourself, then you can catch your own mistakes. So that is Makhraj 11. Moving on to Makhraj 12, that is going to be the Makhraj of, we just did the, the roots of the top two teeth. Now we're going to do uh, in between, the bottom two teeth and the top two teeth. So what is that? That is going to be, Za sin sod. Za sin sod. I want to fit everything here. I don't know if I'll be able to. Let's do that here. Za sin sod. Okay. And that is going to be over here. So what is the makhraj of za, sin, and sod? The end of the tip of the tongue, so the tip of the tongue, with the bottom of the inner surface of the lower incisors. Lower incisors are the two bottom teeth that are in the center. So when the, when the tip of the tongue meets the bottom two teeth, the edge of those two teeth, Right, so we're not talking about the this edge, we're talking about this portion. Now, this is supposed to be the top of your mouth, but imagine this to be the lower part of your mouth. These are your lower two teeth in the center. So when the tip of your tongue is around that area. He says here, the sound is emitted over them, passing between the lower and upper incisors. The sound that comes out comes in between, let's see, you're, you're going to have, of course, a person has more teeth than this, is the bottom two teeth and top two teeth. The tongue is going to be behind this right here. Right. And then the, the flow of air will come in between the two teeth. So I'll read the, the translation of the Makharaj again. He says, the end of the tip of the tongue, the tip of the tongue, with the bottom of the inner surface of the lower incisors, the, the inside of it, inside of the lower incisors, the sound is emitted over them passing between the lower and upper incisors. The sound comes in between. Right, so when you say the, the tip of the tongue is behind here, right? It's behind here. So we say sa, za, sa. That is the makhraj of those, right? Most people can do that. Some people struggle who have a lisp. They have to learn how to place the tongue. So get the tongue closer to the uh, bottom two teeth if they have a lisp. It's because some people with a lisp, their tongue placement is off. So either they will say tha, like uh, thanks a lot. That is because the tongue is overextending and they're not using the tip of the tongue behind those teeth. So it becomes like tha. It becomes like the letter tha actually. So what they need to do is practice pulling the tongue back and having it behind the lower two teeth. Then they can say sa more, sa. 
And there's different kinds of lisps as well. There's an extremely sharp one where like, like, uh, thanks a lot, serious, like that. That's, hmm? Is that a lisp? I think it's a kind of a lisp if it's too much. So you don't want it sounding like a whistle, a little bit less than that. Like, sayaqulu, sayaqulu sufaha. Sufaha. So you don't want it sounding like a, a whistle, like sayaqulu sufaha. You don't want it sound like that. Sa sayaqulu sufaha. Right. And you don't want to say sayaqulu sufaha. That is, if the tongue is overextending, it becomes a tha. Right. So it has to be in that exact placement. The tongue has to be reaching behind the teeth, not over, not too far back. Um, and, and it should be kind of flat. If it's too sharp, it's going to make that whistle noise that I just uh, did for you. So that is the, the makhraj for all three. Za, you just, um, you pull it more z instead of s. And you add a tafkhim to the scene and you get sod. Sa. And um, in a different riwayah, you have za. Like ihdina uh, zlirata, that's not in riwayat hafs. So that would be a uh, uh, za mufakham. So sad is a sin mufakham. We don't have a za mufakham in riwayat hafs. In khala, for instance, they say ihdina zlira zli. So that's not here. And some people will pronounce wa like that. Wa is completely different makhraj. Okay. Now. We move on from there, and we're going to go to the next makhraj. This was number 12. We're going to number 13. I'm going to erase this image. Number 13 is tha, val, and wa. Tha, val, and wa. So this is going to be the tip of the tongue with the tips of the upper two incisors. Okay. So previously for this one, the previous makhraj, we said the tip of the tongue coming into contact with the bottom two teeth. Tip of the tongue coming into contact with the bottom two teeth. For this other makhraj, is going to be the tip of the tongue coming into contact with the bottom of the top two teeth. You understand? The previous makhraj, just seen za is here. The tongue coming here. For this one, the tongue is here. Tongue with the bottom of the top two. So that'll be like fa, fa, val, wa. One thing you ha you have to do is ensure that the tongue doesn't go over. What do I mean by that? Some people pronounce it like this, like fa. Notice if you bite your tongue down, you can. See, if you bite it down, the tongue comes out. You want your tongue to be behind your teeth. So if you say fa, now I can't bite my tongue. See, fa, fa, fa. It's coming into contact with the bottom of the teeth. In the in the back, it's not that you're bite you're you're biting down on your tongue like this, like fa fa, fa fa. That's incorrect. You want it to be behind the teeth. Wa wa val fa behind the teeth. So if you you overcompensate, you're gonna bring the tongue all beyond the teeth. It's gonna look like this. Fa val but that's wrong. You want it behind the teeth. Okay. So these all behind the teeth. So that is makhraj number 13. Again, the tip of the tongue with the tips of the upper two incisors. 
These are the incisors, upper two, tip of the tongue, right here in the back. And for uh, the previous Zasin Swad, tip of the tongue coming right here in the back, and then the, the, the sound flows through. The next makhraj. So now we have completed the throat, the, the mouth, all of the articulation with the tongue and the teeth here. We finally move on to the lips. So we got the two lips here. And give our brother some lipstick. There we go. That, no, that doesn't look right. I'm going to erase that now. Sorry. Okay. So the next makhraj is using the lips. And that is going to be the makhraj of fa. So I'm going to... That here, fa. Yeah. Fa. That is makhraj number fourteen. Okay. All right. So I don't know how much was cut off. Uh, we did ta ta dal. Za sin sod fa va va fa wa ba mim. So we're just explaining the intricacies of mim. There's going to be a gunna, meaning the nasal cavity is going to be involved halfway and the lips are going to be halfway. So you will have to be able to measure, you don't want to overdo the, the nasal. When reciting, we should not sound nasally. Like some people, they have this problem that they sound nasally when they read. Like, Alhamdulillah, that's all coming from the nose. So you don't want that. To practice, you can say, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. But a little bit is going to come from the nose from Meme and Noon. So if you do have that nasally uh, issue, hold your nose while reciting. In the memes and noons, it's going to come in there, so that's fine. Now we reach the last makhraj. So that is going to be in our count here, 18. And uh, we mentioned earlier that Imam Ibn al Jazari in his poem says there's 17. But this is the uh, organization that Shaykh uh, Iman he has in his book. So, makhraj 18. Makhraj 18 is going to be the khayshum, which is this entire, which is overly large in this diagram. The nasal cavity is not this big. The mouth is bigger, uh, but I just drew it incorrectly. He said, uh, it, is a, it is a sound emitted from the nasal cavity, which accompanies the noon and mean in all of their cases, except that its length differs according to their status which will be discussed in the chapter of the durations of the nasalizations. So what does he mean here? For the last one, the two letters is noon and meme. So noon and meme always have some kind of um, effect coming from the, the, the nose. If a person doesn't have a nasal cavity, it wouldn't be alive, but they, wouldn't all, they would also not be able to pronounce noon and meme. Noon and meme are not just the mouth, the lips, and then the tongue. It's also connected with the nasal cavity. That's why any kind of noon and meme, if you hold your nose, or if you're really sick, then you won't be able to pronounce noon and meme. Right? When you're sick, you sound weird when you, uh, because the nose is blocked. So then the noon and meme cannot be uh, recited. That's why... The makhraj of meme and noon is half what we've discussed and half nasal cavity. So that is called the khayshum, nasal cavity, and that completes the makharaj. I'm just going to have to go in here. There we go. So this is all 18, very uh, messy on the board.
So again, let's uh, summarize all of the makharij in um, two, three minutes. The scholars of Tajweed, they have organized all of the letters of the Arabic alphabet into the makharij. There's a difference of opinion of how many makharij there are. Here in our board, we've counted up to 18. You start from the throat, then you cover the makharij of the mouth, then you cover the makharij of the frontal portion of the mouth, ending with the nasal cavity. The first makharaj that we discussed was all the way down in the throat, which is called the furthest part of the throat, aqsa al As you can see, it's written really big because there was a lot of space back then, aqsa al So that is going to be hamza, and uh, which is ha, and uh, it's also going to be um, ha and hamza, right? Those two letters and kind of got erased. Hamza and ha. You go up a little bit. You have a little bit in the middle of the throat. That's going to. It's called wasdul halq, middle of the throat. Ain ha. So a is a little bit more than a. A a ha ha. A little bit higher. You go to the highest portion of the throat, which is closest to the mouth. That's why it's called the closest portion of the throat. Kha, gha. So, ha. Then you go, ha, kha. So there's an elevation. Then, so that's all the letters of the throat. Hamza, ha, ain, ha, ghain, kha. That is known in the Noon, Sakin, and Tanween when we do Ibhar. We know these six letters for that. We now go into the mouth. You got the, the furthest back portion of the tongue when it meets the palate, off, or a little bit in front of that, meaning the back portion, not the furthest back, when it meets the palate, calf, where you have the center of the tongue when it rises upward in the palate. Three letters, jim, shin, ya. So the center of the tongue plays a very important role in jim, shin, ya. Also, the tip of the tongue is, is moving. Baad is going to be the sides of the tongue pressing upward, as well as the tip of the tongue pressing upward. So you have the entire tongue pressing upward. On, this is the top of the mouth, actually. These two sides press, while this one pronounces the, the baad. Ba, ba. Then we have the tip of the tongue. When it covers the range from one premolar to the next, that's lam. Or it co the tip of the tongue, frontal part of the tongue, uh, on the, um, let's say, the gums in the top of the mouth, covering the range from one canine to the next, that's noon, or covering one uh, lateral incisor to the next, that's a raw. Then we moved on to what we covered today. You had uh, tip of the tongue touching the roots, dal. Touching the bottom two teeth, its edge, za sin sad. Touching the edge of the top two teeth, fa da wa. Letters of the lips, fa wa ba mim. And then finally the nasal cavity, noon and mim. So this covers all of the letters in the Arabic language. This with the sifat and the attributes will complete your understanding of how to pronounce letters. You need the sifat. The, the attributes and that's what we're going to cover from next week inshallah wa sallallahu tabaraka wa ta'ala ala khayri khalqi muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh